your girlfriend sexually? Oh yeah, that's an easy one, Andy, because I know like the Bible says like sex is for married people. We all know that. What's, what else you got? Nope, that's not it. Do you know why you shouldn't pressure your girlfriend sexually? Yeah, because you know, if, you, if you do bad things morally, you know, it's not your life isn't gonna work out and then you're gonna pay a price later and there's gonna be consequences and you know, things aren't right with God and you know, it's gonna be bad for a person who does things. No, that's not it. The, re- the reason that you don't pressure your girlfriend sexually is because when you pressure another person to do something they don't want to do, you, recreate, you create a regret for them. And Jesus' followers do not create regret for other people. In other words, to follow Jesus means when somebody tells the story about their greatest regret, they don't think about you. That you're not part of the counseling when they're in counseling. You're not part of the story when they finally meet the person they wanna spend the rest of their life with and they're kinda doing that dance of, do I tell you about my sexual past? I'll tell you a little bit about mine if you tell me about yours, but I only tell you enough to get kinda yours, but I don't want you to know where. You know, when they're kinda doing that dance, they're not thinking about you. Because in that moment when you were tempted to pressure them sexually, you realize, wait a minute, I don't need a verse for this. If I'm trying to impose my will on someone else, that's not love your neighbor as yourself. That's love yourself at the expense of your neighbor. I don't even need a verse. Let me go a little deeper on this. Do you know why you should never play fast and loose with your sexuality or with sex? Well, because God will punish me and there's consequences in my life. No, that's not the reason. The reason is, although there may be consequences in your life, but that's not even the primary reason. The primary reason is this. If you do anything to diminish the sexual experience of another person later, you have sinned against them. And Jesus' followers don't sin against other people. And they don't hide their sin against other people by whitewashing it in terms of their sin against God. God, I know I sinned against you, but I prayed that prayer and you forgave me, so I'm good to go. And your savior who loves you says, well, you may feel like you're good to go, but she's not good to go because of you. Oh, oh. But what, okay, okay, Andy. What if it's consensual? What if it's consensual? Oh, you got me. So what if your little niece or your little nephew or your grandson or your younger brother or younger sister calls you up and says, hey, uncle, granddaddy, you know, uncle, you know, who aunt, you know, me and my best friend are going to poke each other's eyes out with a butter knife, but don't worry, it's consensual. <laughs> you say, no, don't do that. Why? But what's a consensual? You say, yeah, but you don't hurt you and you don't hurt another person. And so your heavenly father says, really, do you need a verse for every single thing? I mean, do you really have to do a Bible study to understand what it means that you don't do anything that creates a regret in someone else? Do you really need me to speak directly to the very specific thing you're thinking about doing when you know what's good for you and you know what's good for another person? Do we really have to go any deeper than love your neighbor as yourself? Do you need a verse for that? You see, here's the bottom line. The New Testament imperatives, that's all the commands in the whole New Testament. The New Testament imperatives are just examples. And God didn't give us an example for everything because God didn't need to give us an example for everything. The New Testament imperatives are simply examples of how to demonstrate your love for God by loving others. 